Well, I would say that since this is the end of the year, I'm kind of going to do a recap of the foundation, your relationship with God, your vision and purpose. And with this being the end of the month and getting into the end of the year, I think we need to give ourselves a round of applause for still being here. Amen. Because I know everybody has something going on, but you made it out and you made it through. Um, I'm going to start in Exodus with the foundation. And honestly, a lot of this comes from Sunday school. Um, those of you who do come out, whether whatever class it is that you are in or you should be in, um, I would encourage you to continue to get there. And the work that is given out, it's not for you to just turn it in. It's for yourself. Um, when we started this, uh, the training for service, when we used to sit right down here in the front, um, I was working at First Data, and actually it was somebody who didn't believe in God that had all this information of what they knew about God, but they played with it. And... Um, had I not even been in this class and kind of started to get the background, the foundation, I really wouldn't have been able to say anything to him. I mean, after a while, the guy still played with it. But Sunday school, that class helped me. Going back to the beginning, um, my prayer life, when I sat over here in KT's class, um, he always said, Pray, pray when you go to the bathroom. Start out there, and then eventually, you know, you'll graduate and be thankful and just pray for everything. I, I mean, I pray for when my coffee tastes good. <laughs> I pray for when I'm at the gas station getting gas. Um, just the other, yesterday, no, day, bef day before yesterday, I um, was at the hospital. Uh, my daughter had her baby, and um, I... Um, was either coming in or going out, and I seen this guy, and I just kind of looked up at him and, you know, said, hi, how you doing? And I kept going. And then last night, I went to Walmart, and I parked on the side that I usually don't park on by the groceries. And right when I parked and I got out of my vehicle, the same guy was coming to go into Walmart, too. And I didn't realize that at first. And I just looked, and I said, you know, hi, how you doing? And he said, didn't I just see you yesterday? Same spot. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. I so said that was at the hospital. And then after that, that night, I, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know his name, but I said, let me pray for him because it was just kind of odd that I would see the same person in a spot at Walmart that I never really park at. But um, that leads me back to um, having a foundation with God. And um, with the characters or the individuals in the Bible, um, if you just have a Bible and not a study Bible or any other tools to learn and become closer to God, um, that's where you stay stuck at. Um, I finally, it's been maybe a few years now, I went and got me a Bible uh, that's a study Bible. I went out to parables and I was in the back where the long shelf is and I put out a whole bunch of different Bibles that they had. I took the time. Um, even if you don't have the money right now to go get it, just go out there and set them out. Look and see what works for you. I say you want to stick with a King James, but if you need something else to break it down, that's fine. Um, I am starting in Exodus. Um, we're going to start with the foundation. Um, I looked at this and learned this in Sunday school, which has stuck with me. And we're going to start at Exodus 3 with Moses' call. I was going to say 13, but go ahead. Can you start at um, 3 and 10? You sure can. Come now, therefore... And I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee, 
when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Okay, here we go, 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Is that all caps in your Bible? Go ahead. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Okay. So in order for us to get to know who I am is, who he is, we should be studying and going over basically what does it mean I am that I am. Um, when I reviewed it and looked at it, um, it talks about how he is the foundation. And if you have a very good Bible, further on it talks about how Lord is spelled all caps with the L larger than the rest of O-R-D, that is in capital. And that goes back, I'm not doing all Hebrew, I'm just going to do one little Hebrew. Um, <laughs> with Hebrew, that talks about, um, in the Old Testament, how that is Yahweh, which is Lord. Mm -hmm. And it says, in my Bible, it's usually uh, in the King, King James Version, printed in all caps, L much larger. It talks about God's name being Elohim, Jehovah, and Adoniah. Um, it talks about um, how he is the being, he is the self-existence, meaning he is the foundation. He's the bottom. And regardless of what relationship you're in, or trying to be in, I'm talking about at work, I'm talking about with your children, your career, anything, you have to start with a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Um, that's coming from the Old Testament, and then I'd like to go over to the New Testament in Matthew. We're going to talk about the foundation there. A lot of times Bishop talks about... Um, that foundation being built on rock and not sand. And I went to Exodus because we always have to start with the beginning. And again, this is the end of the year. And as I say this and teach you, I'm teaching myself. So everything that I say, I'm going to have to, some, I'm going to have to face it back again, again. Um, going into Matthew right. 724. Good thing I know where the books of the Bible are now. So, you know, I, I know my Sunday school teacher is watching me flip to get to where I need to be. But um, I thank God for that. Because sometimes it would get frustrating flipping back and forth trying to figure out where you want to be. And by that time, you're not even listening to the man of God. I do know where it's at. I'm just a little nervous. <laughs> We're going to Matthew, the New Testament, first book. <laughs> Y'all notice that um, the people that teach are serious and they are disciplined, but they all have a sense of humor. And, you know, we have to have a sense of humor, especially if we're going to get up here. Um, I would say that... Um, when Linda called me and told me that I was going to be teaching, y'all know what I did. I just laughed. <laughs> I just, I laughed. I'm still laughing. <laughs> but I said, God, you want me to do this? I mean, I, I, I got a lot going on. But you know that you grow in Christ when you have a lot going on, but you can still continue to push through. Um, there have been times uh, in the last three, six months where I've had stuff that came up. It didn't come up till I got home and there was a notice on my door. And I had, always pro I had already promised somebody that I was coming to see him, day-day. And um, 
there would be something on the door and I'm like, you know what, I don't, I mean, I care, but there's nothing that I can do. Why sit at home and pout and soak about it? I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and go out and see who I said I was gonna see, you know? I'm, I'm, um, Matthew 7 and 24, go ahead. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which builded his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And I'm sure a lot of us have gone through some of this this year, still going through it. Um, again, with the foundation, having a relationship with God, um, you collect data to get married. So there's a relationship there. Um, you spend time with people that you want to be around. That's a relationship there. So to have a relationship with God, you need to spend time with him. Or we need to. That is um, definitely in prayer. It doesn't have to be anything big and elaborate. Um, just talking to him. I'd say the thing that helped me the most was being able to come here for 6 o'clock prayer when I didn't have a key. Even if I couldn't stay long, I just made sure I made it into the house. Because even if we are not here the Spirit of God is still here in this house from a Tuesday night, a Wednesday night, and a Sunday, or somebody else might have already been here setting the atmosphere. Um, anyone that does have a key, if you don't use your key as often as you think you should, just, I, I encourage you to use it. We can always go to people, but at times, there's nothing like going to God. Nothing. Nothing like going to God. Um, the tools again having a relationship with God is the individuals in this Bible the individuals in here there may be something that you're going through that you can read an example of a past individual that what they went through um, mine I would say uh, and then also it doesn't matter who's up here teaching because I've gotten help from Cager I've gotten help from Marcus I've gotten help from Linda I've gotten help from KT anybody that has I got help from Mary teaching Wednesday so it, it doesn't matter who is up here teaching if you want help the help is here and if you see individuals here that have been here for a while, and you might know that they may have gone through something, don't be afraid to ask, what did you do to get past that? You know, um, everything happens for a reason. I'm, I beat myself up. I'm sure others have on, why didn't I get here sooner? But God said, no, I don't, I don't want you here sooner. But you, when he sent me here, you know, I got my letter in the mail and I was gone. That was my letter of, you know what, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Get out of here. Um, and then when I came back the second time, um, I knew that I was out of town and I got the call about Linda's mom passing. Um, even when I was out of town, it had been, what, maybe two years that I wasn't here? It might have been two years, but when I was out of town, um, I was at the mall, and my kids um, saw this man singing, and they were talking to him, and then they went and got me to come here and sing, and I was talking to him, and he invited me. This is out of town now. I wouldn't go to church when I didn't come to church, because there's no other place like Grace, so you just don't go. Um, so I, um, the guy invited me to the church, and I went on a Wednesday night out of town and come to find out he was an assistant pastor at this church. Um, then I got the call about your mother, and I came to that. And after that, I'm like, you know what? This is what I need to be doing. This is where I'm supposed to be at. Um, so I came back, and, you know, there is absolutely nothing out there. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to get that through the, the young people's mind, get it through their head. Um, a lot of times all we can do is get to a point where we just pray for them. Um, 
I just ask y'all to keep my children in prayer. I, again, the humor. God, you want to use me? I got one in the hospital, just had another baby. I got one in jail, you know, and I got one that, you know, he's, he likes guys. But God, you want to use me? Come on, Karen. I know that's you, right. You want to use me? Yes, yes. And, and before, and a lot of Come times we will we'll pull back because we think that we have not done a good job. But when you pour it in and you've done everything that you can do, all you can do is just give it to God and just keep moving. That's it. That is it. And again, if you, this book, this right here, the individuals in here that have done it, that went through it, if you read it and research them out, you'll see that, you know what, things are going to happen, things are going to come up, but all we can do is trust God and believe God. That's it. That's it. That's it. And all we have is each other in this house. Amen. Not out there, but in this house. Amen. In this house. And I'm, I'm so glad that we have gotten to a point where, you know, things come up with each other and it's going to come up, but we are learning to deal with it. There, the things that come up with um, indiv excuse me, individuals, um, you get to, it, it's not for you to go sit and talk about what happened, it's to take an evaluation on yourself, myself, so I don't get in that situation and pray for whoever it was that did get in that situation. The, the, the individuals here who, I mean, there are pillars here. If you have nothing to do, but I honestly, I think everybody in this crowd, because they are here, you know, um, are stable. Foundation. Um, we have, in this house, we've been chosen not everybody gets chosen to come to this house. Not everybody gets the opportunity to come back and be able to stick it out. Um, so when, when you do see individuals come back, um, you don't know what's going through their mind of what people are sitting there thinking. And it ain't nothing but the devil. Sitting, I, this is what I always say. You know what? Come, just plant your behind in the seat. No matter what is in your ear, because what's going to happen is something else going to come up real soon and then it's not even going to be on you anymore. I, I mean, for real. You don't, you don't want it to, but, but it is. And to get involved, even, you know, I would say some of the people that you do see coming because they're not here, um, ask them about getting involved. We are a house of order now, so, you know, ushering, they, ain't got, they don't have to usher all the time, just get on the schedule and usher. You don't have to clean all the time, just get on the schedule and, and clean, yeah. or anything, because that will keep you coming back, that will hold you accountable. And you owe that to, number one, God, and then the men of God, it, it takes it off of him. Or, a, or a, a Brian or a, a Marcus who is already back there doing stuff for the man of God. You know, anything takes, takes the burden off of somebody else. I went way left. So where did I, what was I going at? <laughs> uh, Matthew seven twenty four. Oh, did we read that already? Yes. We did, and we talked about the foundation. Right. The foundation on a rock and not sand. <laughs> Any relationship. Um, Bishop talked about single people having their own foundation. Um, when they get married, that foundation becomes one. If they have children, the children, the children, everything Bishop teaches about children. I didn't come when my kids were wee wee babies, but I was here long enough, you know, it's still a fight because sometimes some of the old stuff that's in them, you still got to push through. And, and I could honest, honestly say that I, it probably wouldn't have been so bad if when I stopped coming and I should have kept coming that they would have got help, you know. Um, a lot of y'all know doing it all on your own is hard. It is hard. But the help is here. Uh, I'm thankful for Marcus and Keith and Bo and all, all the males and uh, Todd Andrews, you know, that, that did reach out to help my children. Um, 
I, I would encourage everybody to pray for everybody's children um, in prayer. Even when I go to the gym, I um, that's my time. I don't have the TV on, but I listen to music. But that's my time that I scan the sanctuary and I pray for everybody. Um, if you do that and you're not paying attention to your time while you're working out, I know it might not look like it, but I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, your time, the time, the time goes fast. There's always, there's always somebody to pray for. There's always something to pray for. Um, it, it may not even have to be the individuals here in the sanctuary. It could be on, you know, on your job. Because we know that we work with people that ain't got it all together. <laughs> and at any point, somebody could roll up in there mad one day and something happens. But it's not going to happen because we're there. Because we're the salt of the earth. You know, it, it may be that we have to smile at them or just reach over and touch their shoulder for them to come on down another notch. Um, the next, I would say, would be um, your covenant, you know, relationship with God. This was, this scripture hadn't been brought up too much, but this was one of my favorite. Years ago on a Tuesday night, Bishop said, this is for you. And it was Ezekiel 16 and 8. And that talks about having a covenant relationship with God. And where, where is Ezekiel? Old Testament. <laughs> I have to sing my little song to get there. Mm -hmm. Notice I get the mic to pray. I get the mic to teach, but they cut the mic off when it's time to sing. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. My gift to Day Day and Lexi Poo is I'm going to sing at that wedding. <laughs> amen. <laughs> no, amen. Okay, that's all right. I might be ready by then. I sound like Jill Scott. <laughs> that's having faith. <laughs> all right, let's see. I said 16 and 8. Why are y'all laughing? Go ahead and start with 7. Ezekiel 16 and 7. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, Behold, thy time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, said the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. So there I, I look at it as God, even going back to six, um, 16 and 6, it talks about how I was polluted in thy own blood. Right. And um, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live, yea. I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, live. So I look at God is telling me to live, and because of everything that I've been through, everything that, I w that was on me, going down in that water up there, he washed all of that off, and he covered me. And now I, I'm, I'm married to God until it's time. I mean, I always still be married to him, but until it's time for that shirt to come. That, that's my husband. You know, so I laugh and I, I talk to him, you know. <laughs> Y'all know me, so <laughs> some of the things that we talk about. And um, also this refers back to um, Ruth, when it talks about how Ruth and Boaz, how he, um, uh, uh, Ruth uh, 3 and 9, how he covered her, and that they were on their way to covenant there. 
So, I mean, each time that you go back and read a scripture, you'll get something different out of it. And if you have that relationship with God, he'll reveal it to you each time that it is something different. And at that certain time, that's what you're supposed to get out of it. Um, again, that talks about having a relationship with God, um, having a relationship further on with Jesus when he came up on the scene. Um, I won't go into detail on it, but one thing that always sticks out is how great Jesus was, um, the womb that he came through. If you um, go back and research the great men in the Bible, um, there might not be a whole lot of detail on the mother, but there is something on that womb that they came through. On the womb that they came through. Um, even our, our, our single women here, the womb that they came through, things that they had to go through. Um, um, some of those, Day Day, your mom, the womb that she, you came through, the womb that you came through. Um, I would say that um, when they talked about Jesus, how great he was, everything had to be set up. It was a prophecy for how he had to come riding in on a donkey. <laughs> Ride, riding in on a donkey. It was a donkey, but it was something great. You know, everything that he did. If you, uh, and the thing about it is, again, I'm going back to the tools. We use our phones to get on Facebook. Um, it's an automatic thing to grab your phone to get on Facebook. What I started doing is, let me grab my phone and, and look at some scriptures. You have the internet on your phone. If you don't know what to, 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 to look at or actually go to in your Bible, you can just Google scriptures on healing, scriptures on depression. I, I mean everything. And then it just takes you right back to your Bible. You know, um, you know, everything is not accurate on, on, on the internet, but I would say we get enough word and teaching here that we can decipher what is correct and what is not correct, you know, and everything that the man of God does teach, it's not for us to just sit there, okay, well, we're finished with service, let me just put my Bible in the truck or, or the vehicle and leave it there. No, you need to take that in with you, and some point, at some time, you need to put some time aside to research and go deeper and further into what the man of God is teaching on, because you never know when you might get called to be up here to teach. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. So, um, from there, I would like to go to Proverbs 13. We've um, established our foundation and our relationship. Um, at times, we can get in the house of God and become lazy. Or if we already are lazy, then we just um, uh, we go to the next level of laziness. And the enemy really enjoys that. All right. He really enjoys that. As much as you want to push through to get up to do something or move forward in your vision or whatever it is that you have written down, you come up with all kinds of reasons and excuses of why you can't do that. And speaking it or even just thinking about that will allow that to become greater than getting up and doing something. Um, when I lost my job back in 2012 at Mutual, I was there for almost 25 years, just short of 25 years. Um, what had actually happened was I had already uh, taken the real estate courses and again, you know, waiting years to pursue it further, I said, well, let me start, you know, reviewing and taking some classes again. And I did. And I had to go to one of the classes. It was my vacation that I was using. And I went to one of the classes that morning and said, right, we had to write a vision down of what you saw yourself doing. And my vision on a uh, index card, yes, was I will be taking my um, badge to security, dropping that off, and starting my new career at, uh, as a million dollar real estate agent. And when I wrote that down, I showed it to the instructor, and she said, whoo, that gave me chills. That day, I went to work, and um, 
was it that day or no the day before um, I had my time off on my calendar and at work they had it written in that I was supposed to be there at 6. So that next day my manager called and he was like, how come you're not at work? Mind you, uh, maybe two months ago I had came into work and there was somebody there that saw all this stuff on the internet about diversity and mutual and everything. And he got upset because he saw all that and I put my things down, didn't even sit down. And he said, they got all this stuff for black people and Hispanics and women. He said, where's all the stuff for the white MFers? I said, excuse me? And you know, I was still coming to church, so I had my God on. And I said, I'm sorry, but you need to talk to HR diversity about that. And then he kept apologizing. And I said, you know, I said, you say this all the time. So this is what's in your heart. No need to apologize. I didn't say anything else. I just sat down. Next thing I know, we got called to um, the conference room. He knew he was, you know, said something he had no business saying. But um, we had to go to HR. And I got written up because he felt that I talked to him derogatory. So I was already on a write-up for that. And then when I started signing up for the real estate classes and I went to class instead of going to work that morning, they took that as me coming in late and called me down to HR and let me go. Um, that was in March and November would have been 25 years. Um, oh. Anybody that loses their job um, after so many years, I see why they either lose their mind or they commit suicide. Um, but I'm honestly, without God, without the word of God, without having a key to this church, I probably would have been in that same boat. I did have my days of not getting up and, you know, not going to work. So I, I, I found scriptures on laziness and being sluggard. That takes me to Proverbs 13 and 4. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. So in, in that scripture, I would read that over and over again. Um, when I didn't want to get out of bed, um, I knew that that was, that was the word and that's what I needed to be doing. Um, I also went to like Proverbs 31 and it talks about the, the working with your hands and being diligent. Um, I, I would read those over and over again. Trust me, if you read it over and over again and you recite it and it, you let it come out your mouth, it does sink in. There are some, some days even now, um, even if I'm off and it's the weekend, you, you get a feeling of, I don't have a job, but I do. But that's just nothing but the enemy. enemy. So uh, I get up and I, I, I read, I pray. Sometimes I don't even actually get up and stand out of bed. I just slide on out, <laughs> down on the floor. <laughs> I do. I just get on down there, I'm, you know, and, and I start praying, you know. But before I open my eyes, it's thank I mean, a simple thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's thank it. you, you that's know. It. That's right. I didn't get no call in the middle of the night, you know. I. You, you get to a point where you learn to sleep at night. Whatever's going to happen is, 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 is going to happen. And, you know, if God is in it to, to, to work it out, that's what he's going to do. Right. And, and again, uh, Cager teaching one time about um, the, the, the man with the son that had the issue. When my, my son was, was and still is um, acting up for now, um, I, I would just go back and read the scripture. It talked about um, the, the, the asking the, the son to be healed. And it was talking about an illness that he had. But at the same time, uh, heal my son, whatever he got going on in his head. Right. You know, I, that, that's what I get out of it. Um, and, and that didn't that that didn't come from Bishop. That that came from Cager. That came from me being here, uh, getting here when I don't want to be here. Um, when when you when you have that feeling and you sitting at work and you don't want to be here, that's the time to hurry up and get to the sanctuary. I mean, hurry up. If if you gotta if you gotta do it to where you don't even go home and you just get here, come, just come here. Just just get here. Cause if you go home, you might not make it here. That's, 
I mean, I mean that, that's it. That's it. And, 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 and getting here, there might be somebody here early that can pray with you. But at the same time, you know what? There's nothing like going to God before him for yourself. He already knows what the issue is. He does. He just says, you know what? Just, just address it to me. You know, I, I want to hear you say it. I want it to come out your mouth. There are times that the things that come up that will try to keep us out the sanctuary, um, situations that are embarrassing, you know, but you know what, it, it's not even about people. It's not even about the situation. It's about what God can do. It's about Satan using everything that he can to try to get you to not come or to stop coming at all. Right, right. But, I mean, you get to a point or you have to get to a point to know that each and every one of us has a purpose. Every one of us. Say it. And it doesn't even have to be standing up here with the mic. Right. It could just be cleaning. Right. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> which, which I don't mind doing. <laughs> but my, my cleaning really is um, my thanks to God for all the times, even way before I got here, that he took care of me and my kids and my house. So the least, if, if there's nothing else that I can do, the least I can do is, is pick up a broom and clean up his house. Amen. That's, that's the least I can do. Because I, I owe him everything. I owe him everything. Um, we, we owe the man of God so much. Not everybody is chosen to be in this house. Not everybody is chosen to stick around to see the great success that comes out of this house. We all have the ups and downs and we don't get it right. I'm saying we. I'm not saying you. I'm saying we. Um, but God, he makes it to where I got a visitor up here. Praise God. <laughs> Oh, well, you probably need to hear this, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all up on my... There's a spider? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the wind. <laughs> but I'm standing on a rock. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, what was I saying? Um, mm -hmm. um, what was I saying? Huh? What was I saying? I'm just seeing if y'all listening too. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, yes, he will make a way for you to be here also. Um, and the people that are here, um, we read our, my scripture going to um, oh, shoot, going to. Um, <laughs> Proverbs. <laughs> um, we're going to go to um, Habakkuk, um, two and two. We done came through our depression. We done came through our laziness. And now we're going to get to the point where it's time for our purpose and writing a vision down. That's where I wrote mine down, but this was back in 2012, and I have slowly moved on it. Um, there have been some hiccups and some things that have come up to kind of make me not uh, make me forget about it or put it to the back burner. Um, and as you grow and mature in the house of God, we know that um, we can't continue to let things come up just to continue to put that on the back burner. Um, you have certain people that you can go to and in the house of God, just, you know, tell them to help you be accountable for what my goal is, what my, my, my purpose. And a lot of times other individuals can see that in us much quicker than we can see that in ourselves because we're always looking and pointing out the faults or what we think is wrong. Um, go ahead and read two and two for me. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision 
and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So that talks about actually writing the vision down, making it plain, and as the bishop had stated, um, was it Tuesday night, that make it a reasonable vision, something that is obtainable. Start there. Um, I'm, I'm sure we're at the end of the year, but there's got to be things that everyone in here has done and accomplished. Um, if you go back and you think about it and you haven't written it down and it is something that you've accomplished, I would say to go ahead and write it down because that, you know, that helps you get to the next thing that you need to accomplish. And this is not just for the adults. This is for the children, the children, the children at an early age. Um, uh, Bishop teaches on how he used to go into his children's room and pray for their companion. Look where they're at now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I encourage, I mean, those, if there's anybody in here that has grandkids already, you know, pray and ha have a vision for your grandkids. Have a vision for yourself in your singleness. When you get married, the, uh, the spiritual vision, um, I would say um, the spiritual vision, how you've grown, what you see yourself doing in the future. It may be what your Sunday school teacher sees you doing in the future. Um, you know, <laughs> you, you, you never know until you get thrown out there. <laughs> you know, but you have to look at it as, okay, God, you know, I'm just going to keep smiling and laughing. You're going to be all right, Tony. You're going to be all right. <laughs> we got you. We got you. We got you. <laughs> um, but um, having a vision for your children, um, having a vision in the future for your, um, if, whether or not you're becoming an entrepreneur or your career. Um, it was uh, yesterday. I, I, don't, I don't have cable. I call it antenna TV. It's amazing what comes on those channels that is very educational. I do say that um, uh, those channels, the things that they have on there are back in the day. Uh, I mean, some of it is how we are brought up in this house versus the reality TV, everything that's on TV now. And I, I would say that uh, Linda, with you know, when you didn't have cable, your, your kids didn't get to see all of that. They had movies. So they weren't exposed to none of that. And you go back, look at all the money that is spent on a cable bill, getting it turned off, paying to hurry up and get it turned back on. The gas spent going to the place to pay it to get it turned back on. I mean, I'm not saying go turn your cable off, but um, yesterday there was something on this called Create TV, that channel, and there was a man speaking. I don't know how all this came together, but he was speaking on the power of purpose. And he talked about, um, he's, he's a life coach, and he talked about G plus P plus V equals your calling. G is the gift, what you love to do. P is the passion, the reason and the purpose that you get up in the morning. Um, and then V for values, the culture, the places that you will use the gifts, whether it be in a team setting, a group setting. And he was talk. I mean, he never came out and said any scriptures. But, it, it, you know, sometimes it's obvious they're talking about spiritual walk with God. But because of the type of audience there is, they don't, you know, specifically say that. Um, I look at it as my audience is... If I'm on my career, my career, my job, or even as Bishop said, um, um, one night he said how we're being trained. You could be on a vacation and somebody 
get sick or something happens and you need to be the one to pray for them, you go ahead and do it. And, and we need to walk in that. Um, I'm speaking to me of getting up, going to pray for somebody when you know God is telling you to do it. And then you sit back and watch the next person. And this always happens. The next person is always Betty that goes and does it. <laughs> Always, always. So, I mean, if God is speaking you to to do that, then then just just do it, and and trust me, He will lead you. It's not gonna come from you. He will lead you to say what needs to be said in English, not in tongues, in English. Because <laughs> that that new person that comes in. You right. know, they don't they don't know anything about that. Right. You know? And and, and, and all it is, is is just plain English. You can go back to when you were going through what was going on in your mind and what you are trying to get out to God. That's it, plain English. No nothing it, it don't even have to be a scripture. My my my, my reason my connection, my intersection of even getting here was at mutual. Uh, Berdina was in IT and, and I, I was at Mutual and we met and we start talking and we start going to lunch and she never once said anything about a scripture but she just told me how great I was, how better I was than the situation, the circumstances or the you know so called male relationships that you get in and everything that that you um what I, that I called myself putting into relationship was for a husband. Not, I mean, my mom and dad, they stayed married, um, but my dad retired from the military. He left here to go look for a job, and he didn't come back for us. So it was just me, my mom, and my sister. And then eventually, um, he talked my mom into coming where he was at, so they kind of got, they got back together. But it was only, I mean, I love him to death, but it was only because he was getting older, and he knew how my mom was, and my mom would take care of him. And then eventually, my sister left. Um, so they're all in Baltimore uh, just recently, and this was all this week. I got the phone call or the text that uh, Daddy's Health was... Uh, you know, it's not the greatest. He's had something going on with his um, pancreas. So they had to take him in emergency. Okay, I got that. Then I got another message. My sister was on the way to the hospital because she's had breast cancer, but um, her number, she still has to go get tested and checked. Her numbers weren't right, so uh, they had to check her out. I was like, okay, is anything else going to happen? <laughs> But that's okay. You know what? I didn't get sad. I didn't cry or nothing. You know that you've learned and you've progressed when you don't fall apart and you're not crying and you have to go. You got you to gotta put it on Facebook for everybody to pray for me and, and this and that. We've been here long enough that we can pray for ourselves. I mean, you could call somebody or text and ask somebody, but we should have enough word down in us and enough scripture and know the characters, the people in the Bible to say that they went through it. I, I can get through this too. You know, on top of that, I'm trying to work a second job <laughs> for Tim. Ooh, we Lord, I need to be wealthy. <laughs> because one night I worked this week, I didn't get home until like 12.30. But that was okay. You know, God said, I need to show you some things. Um, again, he sets it up. But going back to first uh, getting here when I was um, had met Berdina, and we would go to lunch, and she would tell me, you know, um, no, you don't need to be doing this or that because you're greater than this and that. And um, once she, and people would invite me to always come to church different places, but I would never go. I, I would never say yes. I couldn't say yes and commit to that when I know that that was something greater. Um, but she invited me to church and I came and right after that I think the next Sunday I came I came and I got baptized right after that at mutual she didn't work in the same building no more I didn't see her yeah so you know God knew what he was doing that's right he knew exactly what he was doing mm -hmm. I was like okay I mean all right so I just start coming and um even after that first year, um, they had some cutbacks and things going on. 
at Mutual, and it got to a point where she went to the next another building, but then eventually she wasn't there anymore. And um, that year, the following year, we got our um, our tithe statements, and we just kind of compared. Our tithe statements were one dollar off. One dollar, one dollar off. Yeah. I mean, you know, after a while, you have that relationship with God, things will come back up in your mind like, okay, I know, I know that was God, you know, and, and, and I just have to thank God. I mean, she's not here today, but I thank God for her, and I thank God for Jason, because if it, if it had not have been for her or Jason or Alex, I, I, I probably wouldn't have been here. You know, that, that was her assignment. So I, I do, I, I continue to keep her in prayer. Um, there are other individuals that are not here today. I say, you know, we, we can't, everybody has to walk their own walk, but don't give up on them. Just keep them in prayer. Because you never know when that might be you. I, I was taught in, in Sunday school class, never say never, Mr. K.T. Simpson. Because at any time it could be you. Um, God sets things up all the time. I mean, we might not see it right there in front of our faces, but he does. And then there's always Satan that comes in that tries. I mean, as soon as you come through the doors or you in the parking lot, you're not in no mood. You don't want to be bothered. Um, that's where we have to go back and reevaluate ourselves. What's going on? Why do I feel like that? Sometimes... It may be for women, uh, it's that time of the month and I don't want to be bothered. Please don't say nothing to me because I might just bite your head off. But I'm, I'm the only one that thinks like that. No, ma'am. <laughs> I'm not sure what men do, but... <laughs> no. You know, I'm not sure what y'all do, but, you know, that's that time of I'm maturing. I'm going to get myself together um, before I come through the doors. And always know, and, and this is something Berdina taught me, that you never know, you never know what somebody else is going through or what they have going on. So if they speak and say hi or just kind of keep it moving, you never know. You know, don't, don't take it personal. Do not take it personal. And, and I did. I had to learn that. But now, you know what? I keep you in prayer. I might turn my lips up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to definitely keep you in prayer. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm still a work in progress. <laughs> okay, I know that's right. If we get back to our vision, um, we need to um, work on, um, once we write the vision down, take action. Um, work on bringing that into existence. Um, we can ask God over and over again, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be doing? And he t shows us, he's told us, but we come up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. But what he does is he puts the examples in this house who have spoken and talked about, you know, just being truthful about visions that individuals have had. We have our fitness Tim, Tony, Marcus, I mean, we've, we've got Michelle, you know, the fitness. We've got Tamika uh, with her books. I mean, we've got, she's not here, Tisha and TQ. And, you know, people who have had their vision, I'm sure everything has not been perfect with that, trying to get it off the ground. But God said, I got have you guys here to see that. So if they can do it, we can do it too. We, we can do it too, you know. Um, Todd, who's what going back to school now, working on 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 management. I, I remember <laughs> who would say <laughs> he was the king of rebuke. And look at the king of rebuke. <laughs> and look at him now. <laughs> Woo! And and but you know what? He has the bomb wife. Yes, it, it makes a difference. Go it makes a difference. It makes a big difference. And 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 it, and it, the children, very respectful. Um, very respectful. 
everything that has happened and gone on. This is this is this is my my testimony. Everything that has happened and gone on with my son, and you know what happened with him and Todd and Brenda, and, and breaking into the house. Um, God has had mercy. Um, he puts you in a house where there has been things that go on between individuals in the house of God, but. This right here, and God works it out to where there is still love yeah. with every situation. It's, it's not just mine. There are some that are not here anymore. There's some that are still here, but there's still love. It has to be. It has to be worked out. You know, um, we can let things come up that um, eventually, and and this would be an excuse of, well, I'm not coming anymore. Mm -hmm. And and Satan is sitting back like, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right, you don't need to be there. You don't need to be there. But truthfully, there's nowhere else you can go. There is nowhere else. This house, our man of God, his wife, his children, his oldest child, everything that he's had to endure and go through. There's some that have not been here from the beginning, myself, but, I mean, we know and we see, and, and I mean... He always gives his examples, you know, some that teach can get up here and not talk about their own uh, issues or, you know, what has gone on. And anything that is taught or brought up, trust and believe. I'm sure you've witnessed to somebody and then all of a sudden that same thing comes back at you. That same thing and, and growing and maturing in the word of God and the house of God is, you know what? I just witnessed the so-and-so about this, uh, about men, you know, about relationships. And sure enough, not even within 24 hours, you get an inbox on Facebook from an ex one, two, three times, you know. Or something comes up where you tell somebody how to handle something with um, how a coworker talked to you or spoke to you and you encourage somebody on how to handle it, sure enough, before you even get to work and set your stuff down, you can't even sit down before somebody's in your face. So it's, it's not just how we present ourselves in here. It's, it's, it's truly outside. It's truly outside this house. Monday through Sunday. Not just Come on, on Sunday. Yes. Monday through Sunday. Mm -hmm. I know um, I, I realize that work um, they're people that are older than me, but they all call me Miss Karen. Kind of makes me feel old, but I, one person said, you know what, that's just the respect that we give you because we know that there's, there's something different. I'm like, okay. I know I just smile and keep it moving, you know. Work with what you can change and what you can't. Hey, just give it over to God. But um, going back to our goals, um, for 2016, we should have those written down. Your vision, um, a separate budget. I have a monthly budget, and then I also have a get out of debt budget. Um, I listen to, I don't know if it's because I'm older, I, I listen to, and I just turned 45 um, in November. Go ahead, Karen. Um, I really wanted to be out of town for my birthday. But it was okay because there was so much going on here. I'm glad I didn't make it out of town. At first I was sad because I would have I would have missed the young love, the union of Gabby and Dominique. Um, I would have missed the baby shower. And I'm glad I didn't miss that. But leading up to my birthday, I got to... It doesn't have to be elaborate. Um, I know we say, you know, get out of town, get out of town. But you, if you have to be in town, you spend time with some friends, some people who really love you. You can be around them. You can be yourself. Um, yes, chicken wings, a timeout. <laughs> That's all I, that's really, that's all I wanted. I didn't want to go sit up in a restaurant. I just wanted to sit over somebody's house and have on some loose pants and eat some chicken wings. And that's it. That's, that's it. And if you do that over Linda's house, you will wind up standing up here. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm saying because, you know... Those that teach pour out, and eventually we got to see the fruit. And I guess if this is fruit. <laughs> I 
I would like to close with, if you're not for sure on your vision or um, what it is that you are supposed to be doing in the house of God or your career or if you're supposed to have your own business, um, going to Ephesians 1 and 18, it talks about your calling and seeking God. You want to go ahead and read that for me, please? Mm -hmm. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, ward, who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So there we're talking about, I, I mean, it just, in the King James Version, it's as plain as day as you don't know what you're supposed to be doing or have no idea. Just seek God. Seek God. I mean, pray about it. You can fast on it. Um, you don't have to go to God all elaborate and trying to come up with big words to impress him because he already knows there's <laughs> gifts that are That's in right. each and every one of us and if someone continues to come to you and tell you what you're good at you know, you, you might want to look at that. Again, um, yesterday, the, the guy that was on TV and he was talking about your purpose, he was stating that um, sometimes other individuals will see your gift quicker than you will see it. Um, your passion, what you're comfortable doing, you know, what you enjoy doing, you know, turn it into making some money. Everybody, I mean, even down to the, to the youngest, Sleepy's over there. Um, they like to play with bugs, <laughs> things like that. But again, it goes back to the fasting and praying um, to communicate with God. And then when you do pray to him, you can do a lot of talking. But then after that, just shut it up and wait to hear from him. Wait to hear from him. Um, I started sleeping with my notebook because sometimes I'll get something... Um, like in the middle of the night, I'm like, okay, but I'll go ahead and I'll write it down and then go back to sleep. Because I'm like, okay, well, I probably won't remember that right then and there. Um, I do have to say that it was last year um, in December when Cager had his last play. Um, there's a scene with um, uh, the one lady she sang. Her name is Miss Bonner. Mm. And she sang, and um, I was getting ready to leave um, after the play, and I walked past by the stairs, and then I said, no, let me just come down here and tell her, and it was Rochelle, you know, what a good job they did. And um, I came down to tell her that, and I was getting ready to leave, and Rochelle said, oh, you, you, did you get another, get another job yet? I said, oh, I already have a job. I'm just looking for another one. And then the, the lady, Miss Bonner, she said, no. She said, God told me, and I didn't know her. She said, God told me to tell you, you don't need to go be looking for no another job. He said, she said, um, he has work for you to do. She said, I know Bishop and how he teaches, and you've been sitting up under him too long. Um, uh, reaping, you know, getting the word and the benefits, and it's time for you to start pouring out. And she said, this time next year, you're going to be doing this, 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 and traveling. And it wasn't until two days ago, I was like, well, was she talking about this right here? Because <laughs> it is about a year. <laughs> And I said, oh my, you know, I never, I wasn't, I never got mad. I wasn't scared about getting up here. Um, I still ask, and I would, haven't asked the question yet to Bishop, why do you have me close out in prayer? I guess I don't need the answer to that. But, um, you know, sometimes you ask over and over again. But um, 
the, yeah, Miss Bonner, she was saying all this stuff. And then Rochelle kept trying to interrupt her and she would say, stop that, stop, stop that. She said, I have to say this because the blood is not going to be on my hands. And she just went in on telling me. And I, I wrote, I wasn't really good at remembering things, but I did go home that night and I wrote down everything she said. I did. And I was like, okay. All righty then. Yes, ma'am. So that is all I have. I hope this blessed you. <laughs>